from the gospel according to Luke, the uh, second chapter of the gospel according to uh, Luke, chapter 2, verse 1. The New Testament, the Gospel according to Luke chapter 2 and verse 1. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was the governor of Syria. And everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manga, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over the flock at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be uh, for all the people to die in the town of David. A Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manga. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appear with the angel praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to man on whom his favor rests when the angels had left them and gone into heaven the shepherds said to one another let's go to Bethlehem let's see these things that has happened which the Lord has told us about so they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manga. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in the heart, in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. I mean. Three months old, she went to Joseph, Mary. Just about she was to give birth, eight or nine a month in, See, according to the word of God, according to the prophetic word of God, that said, you Bethlehem, and that is uh, in Micah, in the prophet Micah, if I remember it correctly, you Bethlehem, even though you are small, uh, uh, in, in, mid, in the midst of the millions of Judah, you will receive a man who will lead in Israel. And his exit are uh, said from the beginning of the world. His first exit was his birth. His second exit was the resurrection. And the third exit was when he was taken up in the air. And the fourth one is the rapture of the church that is coming. And the last exit is the coming back to God and marrying the church of Christ so that all can be one again. All these exits were prophesied from the beginning of the world in the gospel of God that were promised, that was promised to people. Amazing, isn't it? A different gospel of God that is promising the coming of Jesus and a difference between the gospel of Jesus that is the truth of God and the, it has the power to save the believer. We're talking, of course, Old and New Testament. 
we do thank God for it. We do thank God for His Word. The prophetic word in the Old Testament, but especially more for the Word of the New Testament, the Word that is able to save and reveal the truth to people. And according to the Word of God, He, Jesus Christ, was supposed to be born in Bethlehem. But was there any opportunity, any chance, for anyone to make Joseph and Mary to take his wife eight or nine months in pregnancy, pregnant, about to give birth and go all the way to Bethlehem? That is why I'm telling you, and I'm saying this again, that your plan is prepared for you as long as you are prepared to obey in the righteousness of God, in, in simplicity. And all of a sudden, in the heart of Caesar Augustus was placed to issued a decree that a census should be taken for the first time because he wanted to know the entire Roman world and the, the, the people living in this world. And the word of God says it's the first census that took place while Quirinius was a governor of Syria. But that wasn't just it. There was also... Um, a decree that everyone should go to his own town to register. And there was even the, uh, if, if someone wouldn't obey, he would be executed. These are not simple things to play about or to meddle with. That is why Joseph had to move all the way to Naz from Nazareth to Bethlehem. It's not, if you t take down a straight line, is it's it's very long and it's up on a mountain that is why we're talking about 146 kilometers he went up the mountain because Bethlehem was up in the mountains now imagine a woman that is about to give birth going 146 miles kilometers rather uh, on a donkey on a mule and the man walking how many days would, they, would it take for them to reach from Nazareth all the way to Bethlehem? 146 kilometers walking. Could they walk 5 kilometers a day? 10 kilometers a day? More than 15 days, I assume. But all things were prepared. The way, the place, the time... And all things were prepared by God for them. And they reached Bethlehem just before the time came for the baby to be born, it says in verse 6. But things are not easy. They will never be easy because through many sorrows we all must enter eternal life. There was no place in the inn for them to stay because Bethlehem was just a village. There should be about one or two in. A stable and a manga. I was reading. There weren't like more than 300 or 500 people living in Bethlehem. A very small village. And they say about 300, not even 500 people were living in Bethlehem. A very small, insignificant village. But it was the town of David. Because Jesus Christ was supposed to to be born in Bethlehem because he was the son of David. He was from the lineage of David. And because other people came in Bethlehem for all around the nations, there was no place for them to stay. Now imagine 15 days worth of walking towards Bethlehem and she wasn't able to find a place in the inn. She was placed in the manga and she gave birth in the manga and she wrapped that baby in cloth. In cloth. But nothing is done by chance because she was supposed to place it there. And that was the, uh, the, the sign of God out in the, the mountains. There were shepherds that were tending their flocks at night. And all of a sudden an angel of the Lord appeared to them. All of a sudden. 
an angel of the Lord appeared to them, says in verse 9, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. Do you understand what it means in the dead of night for a light to come in, to appear brighter than the sun? I would assume an angel to be standing in front of you. I would be terrified, lying down as dead, as the Bible also confirms that some did. And now he, the angel replied, Do not be afraid, he said to them, because I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Because today, this night, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is... Christ the Lord. And the, these are the first martyrs. These are the first messengers. How important is it? How beautiful is it for you to be a messenger of Christ? And now he's even giving them a sign. This will be a sign to you, he says in verse 12. So you may believe. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manga. The one manga that is in Bethlehem, where the, the animals eat. And you will see a baby wrapped in cloths. This is Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. Hallelujah. They could not second guess it because suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel praising God and saying glory to God in the highest how many were they 50 a hundred a thousand the word of God says a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel praising God in heaven and they were singing there was praise in God, glory to God, as they said, and the highest and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. Glory belongs to God. On earth, peace of God is coming through the Lord of peace, that is Jesus Christ, and favor and love is coming in the hearts of people. This, uh, this uh, was uh, uh, something that they witnessed so that they may believe as well, and they could not second guess it right after that. And then the angel left, and the shepherds said to the one another, Because God gave them a beautiful sign, and gave them more than a say to also believe in God. And we have also received a very nice sign to believe in, that is the gospel of Christ. If it is written, it is the truth. If it doesn't say it, the word of God doesn't write it down, then we don't believe it. We don't pay attention to it. But they said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see these things that this thing that has happened to search around to find that manga find that baby that the, the angel told them about now all together they hurried off and found Mary all together and they went to Bethlehem they went to the manga Hurried off, the, uh, we see in verse 16, the word of God saying, And they found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manga, according to the word of God. And when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. They were amazed. A son was given to us. And his name is miraculous, Lord of Lords. The glory to God, p peace to, to on earth and favor to the heart of people and love. And they were all amazed. Mary too. But Mary had a very nice characteristic. Whatever she heard, she would treasure up and pour in them, pour in them in, the, in her heart. She didn't go out 
and spoke about what God and the shepherd said about her baby. No, she didn't speak to anyone. She treasured up all these things in her. It is very important, this one. When you are speaking too much, when you are speaking a lot, this is not from God. You need to treasure up all these things and pour them into your heart. And whatever you say, to be from God. For you to speak from the Word of God to your wife, to your household, to your brothers and sisters. Not just gossiping, not just talking and talking. No. Mary wasn't speaking out. Mary wasn't sharing the news with anyone, but rather she was treasuring up all these things in her. And she was thinking, what did I just see? She has so many experiences so far. She gave birth even though she uh, was a virgin. She gave birth through the Spirit of God. Uh, she went to Bethlehem according to the Word of God. But she wouldn't speak. She wouldn't share the news. She wouldn't share anything. G please, God, give us such a heart to not just talk too much or gossip or but the days uh, came came about to circumcise uh, the baby according to the law of Moses the miracles wouldn't don't stop there because there's still way for Joseph and Mary to go because it is written I called my son from Egypt he, there, there's still way from them to go things to happen in their lives you still have a lot of way you are not done we didn't even start I could dare say we will be starting when God will visit his people in the latter days with the power of the spirit with this last rain that he's talking about when all the nations will stream to the mountain of God and they will say, Please, Lord, teach us the truth. They won't be asking for miracles to believe. They will be asking for the truth that is missing in the, from their lives so that we may walk in your paths. We may walk in righteousness. This is the end. Now it's not even the start. We haven't even started yet. And they decided on the, uh, to go to Jerusalem, 10 kilometers about Bethlehem from Jerusalem. And they reached Jerusalem to uh, circumcise Jesus. And now a new miracle happening, is happening there. There was a priest who was old, called Simeon, who was older in age, a man who was righteous and devout, who had one characteristic. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, says in verse 25. Only the one who are expecting and waiting for the appearing of Christ will be saved. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, even in, in, uh, as he was elder now in age, because the Spirit revealed to him that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Christ. But he didn't grow weary. He was still expecting. And as he was elder in age, the Spirit moved him. At this very instant, at this very day, at this very time, where, when Joseph and Mary were in the temple, bringing Jesus to be given to Christ, to be devoted to God, to be devoted to God, as the Lord Moses said, he was moved to go into the temple courts. What kind of chances are there? Our life is going to be full of, uh, uh, full of things that were happening, not by chance, but by the plan of God, because He is creating all these circumstances around us so that we may receive power and so that He may also believe, uh, talk to us, strengthen us, console us. 
And as he is taking, Simeon is taking the child in his hands. And through the Spirit of God, he knew that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Christ. When he took Jesus in his arm, he is receiving the message. It's beautiful for you to be able to have an open channel with God so that you may be receiving the messages of God, not your own opinions. He is the one. He received the message. He is the Lord Christ. And I could dare say he was filled with the Spirit of God. He is now saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you now dismiss your servant in peace. Not according to your word. According to your personal promise to me. For my eyes, as in verse 30, have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all people. And pay attention to this. A revelation from the Spirit. 32. A light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. The preaching, the message is not for just the Israelites. By the revelation, the gospel is for the Gentiles too because the Israelites will not accept it. A light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. Now, imagine the amazement of Joseph and Mary. And now, Joseph and Mary were amazed. Marvel says the, uh, the text at what was said about him from Simeon to the baby. A light for revelation. The, the, the baby that you're holding in your hands, that child that you're holding, and it's yours, Joseph, and you took in, is a light of revelation to the Gentiles and a glory to your people, to the people of Israel. Do you now understand, Mary and Joseph, that Jesus Christ that brought you in His church today. He didn't bring you so that you may still be in darkness. He brought you in His church, and uh, apologies for saying this, but He brought you in so that you may be a light of, for revelation to the ones that are in darkness. With the confirmation, the way of your life, you will be able to confirm, testify Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Through you... People will see God because you will be a disciple of Jesus because there will be the love of God poured down into your heart through the Spirit of God. Your faith will be activated through love and your hope will be a confirmation, a faith that is activated through love and done, given rather by Christ, by God, the child of God heir of God and you also brother sister I'm now repeating you brother and sister you are a light for revelation to the Gentiles and I'm not saying this because I am thinking that you are greater or less than anyone else you are the light for revelation to the Gentiles with the confirmation of your life, you will be able to testify Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And now, Simeon blessed them and said to his mother, the, the mother of the child, this child, it says in verse 34, that child, the child that you're holding, I'm holding, is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be spoken against. A, spo a sign that will be spoken against, causing the falling and rising of many in Israel. The, the master of this world, the enemy, Satan himself, will darken the minds of people so that the light of the gospel may not shine in them. But on the other hand, God the Father, is bringing light, enlightening the minds of people. And Jesus Christ is teaching the people, His people, the path that they should take. And the Holy Spirit is advising us about all details in our lives. A light of the nations through God the Father 
and the Son and the Spirit. And on the other hand, darkness of the ones that are unfaithful, that do not believe in Jesus Christ. Amen. To the name of our Lord. But now, speaking to Mary, he says, And a sword will pierce, will pierce your own sword too, verse 35, because the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed. You are nothing more than from a me person. And you will see your own son, your firstborn, being crucified upon the cross. You will hear him say, it is finished. I'm giving up my soul, my spirit to you, Father. And you will not depart from him still. From Nazareth, you will not depart from him. He will go to Jerusalem. And the Lord will turn to you and say, Woman, he is now your son. Speaking about John, the beloved disciple of uh, Christ. And you will speak to John and say, Now, my servant John, this is now your mother. And from that moment on, John received the mother of Christ in Jerusalem. Not in Nazareth anymore, but in Jerusalem. Why? Because Jesus said, said to them that you still need to remain in uh, Jerusalem. And you still need to wait for the Spirit of God to come down upon you. Not after many days. After he was resurrected and taken. And Mary was there with John in the Pentecost, waiting for the time of the Spirit of God to come down. And as she received the Spirit too, she moved along uh, the gospel and uh, the way of Christ. But that's not enough. Uh, how can she strengthen the ones that are lacking faith now? The ones that are weary now? A tragical situation of Joseph and Mary now. We are going back to uh, Simeon uh, and, the, and Jesus Christ being devoted. And that's not enough. All these things we've said before, we are also seeing Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. And she was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, or just seven years. And then was a widow until she was 84. And the characteristic of Anna the prophetess, Lord, she never left the temple. Do you hear this, sisters? She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. A rare woman. She never left the temple of God. She didn't leave her own life. She didn't go wherever she pleased. She was set free from sin, but then she was a servant of Christ. She brought herself to be a servant of Christ. She was useful to the work of God. She was able to console the ones in need. And Joseph and Mary in the instant instance. And by chance some people could say but that's not true Christ God prepared all these things and she came up to them at that very moment she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem the word of God is not speaking to all people See, the Word of God is speaking to the ones who are looking forward to the redemption and the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Word of Christ is speaking to these people and looking forward to it, expecting. It doesn't mean I'm just coming to the church. I'm living. It means I'm living from Christ every single day. Just as God sent me, says Jesus, and I'm living for the Father in the same manner I'm sending you so that you may live for me. Who are you living for? What is the work of your life? What is your mission? Why are you brought in this earth, on this earth? What is your work? What is your path? 
Anna the prophetess lived for Jesus, for Christ. A great business, isn't it? A great path for us to live for Christ. A servant of Christ, free from sin, but now becoming a servant of, of God. Then and only then, our reward will be in righteousness and our end, eternal life. Then and only then, as you are set free from sin and you are enslaved, bring yourself down to be a servant of Christ. And as they finished all these things, and Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom and the grace of God was upon him. That coming back was not simple. That return was not simple. There in Bethlehem, three wise men with gifts still came, as we see in another gospel. And it was revealed to them that a king of Israel was born. The king of Israel was born at uh, Bethlehem. And they came to pay their respect. And Herod, who was wicked, in Jerusalem, the, the whole of Jerusalem were amazed and were terrified. And he's now asking the wise men, you're going to Bethlehem. I, I need to also pay my respects to the king. And they saw the star. They, the wise men were led by the star that actually led them straight to the manga. And they gave them they gave them gifts. They had no money. They needed to have money to go to Egypt. And they needed to go to Egypt because Herod had taken the decision to kill all the babies uh, in Bethlehem, fearing he may lose his throne. And as they left, these three uh, wise men, we don't know if there were three or more, but they left. An angel comes again and says to Joseph, now you need to depart quickly and you need to go to Egypt because Herod wants to kill your child. And this is the characteristic of Joseph once more. Immediate obedience to the Word of God. He believed and immediately acted upon the Word of God, not according to your own opinion. Or th I'm thinking that this is the best for me to do. No, this is what the Word of God, this is what the angel of the Lord told me. This is what I'm going to do. He took his wife and went to Egypt straight away. Herod understanding, understood that the uh, wise men fooled him because they never returned. Because it was revealed by the angel to them to not go back to Herod and send uh, soldiers to kill Be all the children uh, in Bethlehem and the surrounding villages uh, two years uh, and lower and below. But Jesus was not there. The enemy cannot touch him. Let me say this again. When you are in a place where the Lord wants you to be and needs you to be, the, the, the Satan cannot touch you. But you need to be where you are supposed to be, and the angel cannot, uh, the, and Satan cannot touch you. And they stay there uh, in Egypt for a while. They had the gift from the wise men, and they were able to survive and live there. And when the time came, the angel of the Lord visited Joseph and said, Go now back, uh, because the ones who were seeking the death of your child are now dead. What kind of a plan is this? But I'm not amazed by the plan of God. I am amazed by the execution of Joseph, by the heart of Joseph, by the character of Joseph. He was faithful throughout. What kind of a man was he? He was a carpenter. But what kind of a man, what kind of a soul and heart did he have? He was obedient to the Word of God in every detail. And he's now coming back to Bethlehem and Jerusalem. Now Herod was dead. But there were other people that wanted to kill Jesus. And according to the word of God, again, goes to Nazareth, back to the, his hometown, because the child needed to be called Nazarene. 
from Nazareth. And that in Aramaic means sent by God or uh, disregarded in Hebrew. That is why the Israelites, the, the, fa the, the uh, faithful, the disciples of, uh, of Christ, they were called Nazarenes. And in Antioch, in the city of the nations, they were first called, the disciples of Christ, they were called Christians. Amongst the nations, because amongst the Israelites, they were disregarded. And we are now called Christians. Are we not Pentecosts? No. I plead with you. We are not Pentecosts. We are not Orthodoxes. We're not, we're not Catholics. We are the disciples of Christ. I'm into the name of Christ. We are the disciples of Christ. We have a teacher and a master, and his name is Jesus Christ. And we have the Spirit of God that is advising us, that is moving us, leading us. Of course, the nations have to give a name to our church, a free apostolic church of, Pente of Pentecost, but we are not Pentecostals. We are the disciples of Jesus Christ, of our Lord. Amen to the name of God.